This might actually surprise some people, but I don't make my opinions about software based on slogans. I'm not particularly interested in that kind of stuff. When I say something like bash is bloated or some program is bloated or something like that, or when I say that something else is minimal, I'm not trying to convince you with slogans. In fact, you should ignore it whenever I say something like that. Instead, when I say words like that, I usually, I'm in a position where I can show you the way that you know a minimalist piece of software can benefit you or the way that a bloated piece of software is bad or something like that my ch that is actually my channel so yesterday when i did a video called bash is bloated i showed you not just you know the differences between bash and posix compliant shell uh, but where the differences can confuse people who are writing scripts where they can cause breakage and why it's important to know the difference and apply the difference when i review software that's minimalist I don't just review them because they have little few lines of code. I review them because they're extensible, you can use them, I can show you the places where they benefit you. Even if they might be a little more difficult to learn at the beginning, I can show you where you can benefit from them. So, uh, last week, or a couple days ago, whenever it was, I did a video on System D, And I that video amounted to me saying, that the system D hatred that is universal, not, I mean, not universal, but common among a very uh, loud mi minority of people uh, is a meme. And that system D hatred, I'll, I'll put it in these words, I have tried many times over the course of me using Linux to hate system D, and I just cannot force myself to do it. A lot of you guys got mad at my video. You sent me these, uh, you know, websites with like 30,000 reasons to hate SystemD. And guess what? I haven't just already read those, but I've read those with the intention of hating SystemD. I've wanted to hate SystemD. I've wanted to read those and get some knockdown argument as to why SystemD sucks and is terrible. And I just cannot do it. I cannot force myself to believe that SystemD is a bad thing. I'm not saying that system D is the best in its system, but in my position as someone who recommends software to other people, I cannot do for system D what I do with other bloated software. I cannot show you the superiority of some other kind of init system over system D because let's, let's think of it. Let's think of it concretely. Um, what, what's bad about bloated software? Okay. Bloated software, for example, um, it uh, might run slow. Okay. So Firefox is an extremely bloated program and it takes a lot of time to start up compared to, you know, your terminal emulator or something like that. Bloated software might run slow. Bloated software um, may be prone to bugs or something like that. If it's really complex, it might break often when it's exposed to new environments. Uh, bloated software might take, you know, it might have a bigger footprint in terms of memory, in terms of, uh, you know, your CPU usage. Firefox, again, is, is one of those pieces of software. You know, if I run it on my Core 2 Duo or whatever, or my i5 processor, uh, it'll at least take up a core. It's ridiculous. Uh, so uh, what else is bad about bloated software? Bloated software is hard to extend. It's hard to build pieces of software that, you know, act with it to do extra things. That's the reason that bloated software is bad. It's not because bloated is just a bad word that I have bad emotional feelings about and people call software bloated and I hate it just because that's how I think. That's not, I, I'm not into sloganeering. If I say something like a piece of software is bloated, that's what I mean. Now, when I look at system D, system D has, you know, an order of magnitude more source code than other init systems. You might think that that's bloated, but when I am making software recommendations, here's what, I, think about those four different things we just talked about. So is system D slow? No, it's not slow. It, I mean, if anything, systemd, even its adversaries will admit, systemd boots up faster than other init systems. I mean, it was one of the first to parallelize different processes. I mean, of course, other init systems nowadays will imitate that, um, but systemd is certainly not slow. I don't think anyone says systemd is slow. Uh, does systemd have a lot of memory usage, CPU usage? No. I mean, I have four machines here. I have two that run systemd, one that runs um, uh, run it, and one that runs OpenRC. Is there any difference between the memory overhead between the systemd systems and the ones that don't have systemd? No. I mean, there might be something that's unnoticeable to human eyes, uh, but I've never seen one. You, there might be some benchmarks out there, but I wouldn't be surprised if systemd actually had less overhead. You never know, but I'll just say I've never noticed any kind of memory or CPU usage difference between systemd and other systems. Uh, does systemd break? A lot of people will talk about systemd, it's prone to breakage or something like that. And I will say, if I pretended 
that systemd has been more buggy than other init systems and i said that to my subscribers i would be lying systemd is mu it's definitely mu open rc i will say has been very buggy for me but i would be lying if i said something like systemd break or broke uh, a lot or something like that or that it gave me some unexpected problem systemd works it works relatively well it handles breakages of other programs very well and I'm not gonna, I'm just not able to pretend otherwise. Again, I've tried to hate systemd. I've tried to hate it for these reasons, and I just can't. Uh, on the last point was extensibility, okay? Is systemd monolithic and therefore not extendable? No, frankly, it isn't. I mean, it isn't just broken up into a bunch of different binaries that do a bunch of different things, um, but it is much easier for, for if you wanna write, uh, what is it, one of the unit files, is that what they call? If you wanna create your own service for systemd, it's the easiest thing in the world. You can easily make a three line, a three lined uh, file that allows systemd to start this thing up for you and it works. It's very easy to extend. So it's hard for me to pretend that, again, systemd could be the most bloated program in the universe. I cannot, for the life of me, actually show you one example of where that bloat causes any problems. If anything, systemd is easier to use. It is uh, and uh, maybe not by very much. It might not be that much easier, but I cannot for the life of me pretend that systemd is somehow bad. And it, it, since I am in the position of recommending people software, I am just not able to say that systemd is something bad or something that a novice or, in, or intermediate or even power user should try to avoid because there's just no hassles that I've ever run into. And it, it actually avoids a lot of the hassles of setting up uh, another system. So that's, that's all I can say about that. Now, a lot of people will said of my last video that I misrepresented arguments about systemd. And that's not really the case because my, from my viewpoint, I said in that video, and I will say again, that there really is no reasons to not use or to, to hate systemd. I mean, you might have reasons to use another init system. Um, you might like them just because they're fewer lines of code or they, they don't have you know, bloat or whatever. You know, I'm not saying that that's not a, a fine reason to use another init system, but I, as someone who is making practical recommendations, I cannot pretend that systemd is something terrible. Now, a lot of people said, oh, you're not, you're not, you're straw manning our arguments. And my point was that people who are against systemd, it is not that they have reason, you know, one knockdown reason for being against systemd, because there's a big difference between reasons for doing something and rationalizations for doing something. And in the case of systemd hate, what has gone on is that people have just decided, as I was a couple of years ago, they have just decided to hate systemd because it's bloated, because blah, 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 blah. And they will run with that and they will go through the, you know, change history of systemd. They will go through the bug history of systemd and they will list out a million little things that they think is just terrible. Oh, you know, it you know broke when it connected to this module. Oh, it has binary logs. Oh, it has all these things that no one realistically cares about. Or if they do care about, there are design decisions. I mean, like binary logs and system D. I think that's stupid, but I'm not gonna pretend that that is something that actually makes a big difference. Okay, I can grep the output of journal CTL if I wanted to. It's not, it's not any major inconvenience. Um, but people who are pathologically anti-systemd, they have this way of operating where they decided to hate systemd and they will go and find a million little nitpicks and throw in your face, none of which make any practical difference. And if you want to do that, if you want a purity spiral about systemd, that's fine. If you, in fact, if you want to advocate using other init systems, that's totally fine with me. I, you know, I actually prefer run it over systemd. Um, but I'm the reason I don't talk about this on my channel is when I am recommending software to people, I the, my way of looking at it is if I do a video where I say that you should use run it, you should use you should avoid system D, that would probably be net frustration for my subscribers because a lot of them would take my advice and the best case scenario for a system D user is they go to another distribution and you know, they learn the new commands, they learn the differences about them, um, and nothing breaks, and they have no advantages. Again, you can say all you want about, oh, systemd violates the Unix philosophy. When a program on my computer in user land violates the Unix philosophy, I can show you why that is annoying. I can show you how, you know, Unix-like programs are beneficial. That is easy to do. Most of my videos are on that. 
I cannot do the same thing with system B for what you can hate it all you want. But you know, service administration is basically its own thing. It's already hermetically sealed from everything else. And uh, system D is not, e even if it weren't, system D is not less extensible than any of these other init systems. I, I cannot pretend. Like again, I've wanted to hate system D. I've wanted to loathe it. I've wanted to like be cool and, and, and pretend that it's like the end of the world, but I just can't do it. If you, if you want to hate a piece of software, if you want to hate software, let me give you some advice because system D there's all this contempt for it. And some of the contempt, you know, some of the nitpicks are actually things to worry about. They're not things to like actually care that much about, but the, you know, there are some nip system D does do thing. It does replicate things that other things on the, the system does. That is sort of stupid. But if you want to complain about software, let me give you some advice. Um, complain about Firefox. As I mentioned before, Firefox is a, a painfully bloated program that is, unlike systemd, it is noticeably slower than, you know, some minimalist alternative. It's noticeably more annoying and they're constantly adding in stupid features. Nowadays, Firefox, you might have a notification system on your computer, you doubtlessly do, but Firefox said, you know what, we need another notification system. We need to have push notifications. We need to make them default on Firefox. So that's how it is now. Firefox has its own way, you know, on your machine, when you open a file with XDG open or, you know, my maps or, or uh, maybe you even have MailCap, you have many systems on your computer that decide how to open files. Mozilla said, you know what, that's not good enough. We're going to add another one just in Firefox. That not only is bloat, it's not bloat in the abstract, but that is something that tangibly harms every computer user. Because if you want to change settings, you, if you want to use some, you know, a new PDF viewer, you have to change your default PDF viewer in XDG open and mail cap, and then in Firefox, because they're all separate things. That's stupid. That's something that actually harms people. The bloat in system D that exists or might as well just not exist. I cannot give you practical examples of how it harms users or how it, it makes your life more difficult. I, again, I would be lying if I said that system D was not the easiest to use in its system that had the fewest headaches and it might have a million bloated things about it, but I cannot for the life of me do it. And if you want to, so again, on Firefox, it's not just that it, you know, it, does its own file hand handling and stuff like that. Firefox also has uh, geolocation. Why is that default? It's a free software program that by default will monitor your location and send your send some of your metadata to a server. That's insane. How, how are we allowing like a free software application to do that? Why is that the, de the default on these kind of programs? It's ridiculous. Now, if System D did half of that kind of stuff, people would be up in arms. But for whatever reason, the, our, people are just so much more sensitive to sensitive uh, to uh, system D than every other program, even when there are all these terrible programs that are doing the same things. People will say, oh, you know, system D was, uh, you know, made by Pottering, who was funded by Red Hat, who was partially funded by the DOD, who might have been involved with the NSA. So therefore, system D is an NSA honeypot. That's the train of logic. Well, let me surprise you by saying, guess who funds Linux right now? Google? Microsoft, uh, Amazon, IBM, literally every antichrist in this, in the world has some money in Linux right now. And if you want a conspiracy theory about that, please do it with Linux. Uh, please do it anywhere else. And this is what I'm talking about. When I say that system D hate is a meme, this is what I mean. There might be, I am sure that there are many people who have been inconvenienced by system D in the past. It has made a lot of decisions. There are stupid things that I don't like about it. That 90 second wait on errors, that is the stupidest thing in the universe. There are things about system D that I don't like, but I'm not gonna pretend that it's ending the world. I'm not gonna pretend that it, it uh, again, I'm not gonna pretend that it's some kind of hassle to use. And I would be lying if I recommended people other init systems because they're better. Because I, you know, system D could be a whole bunch of lines of code. It could be a whole bunch of bloat or whatever, but I'm not, I, I can't, I can't pretend. I can't hate system D. I've wanted to. I've wanted to hate systemd. I just cannot for the life of me do it. So I'm sorry. So anyway, and if you if you have been able to hate systemd for some reason, congratulations. But you know, if you're a novice user and you're very confused why people are getting so worked up about it, just ignore it. This is just a meme. It's just one of these things that people get upset about. Um, and systemd is fine. You know, whatever.